This is the fastest unibody 13 inch MacBook Pro that Apple ever made. It's got a 2.9 gigahertz dual core i7. And up until about a month ago, this was the fastest 13 inch unibody MacBook Pro that money could buy. Now there's this. This, as far as I'm aware, is the world's only quad core 13 inch MacBook Pro at least until the 2018 ones came along. But you will never see a quad-core 13-inch unibody MacBook Pro except for this one. And it's pretty crazy. So how does something like this come to exist? How did it take Apple nine years of manufacturing 13-inch MacBook Pros to get a quad-core chip in it, but this one right here is from 2012 and it has just that. Well, to find out, I brought in the absolute mad lad who put this thing together, and wouldn't you guess it, it's DOS Dude. Hello. This <laughs> is a <sighs> mid-2012 13-inch MacBook Pro that has been upgraded to a quad-core CPU. Unbelievable. So. This thing is actually pretty significant because Apple started making the 13-inch MacBook Pro in 2009. They basically upgraded the aluminum MacBook with a couple of other Pro-like features. And also this 13-inch notebook gets that same incredible new vivid color, 6% greater gamut display. It also gets up to seven hours of battery life. There's that SD card slot as well. This new 13-inch notebook also can expand up to eight gigabytes of memory built in LED backlit keyboard is now standard in it as well. So with all of those features, just like the 15 inch, just like the 17 inch, it deserves the name MacBook Pro. But even though Apple called the 13 inch MacBook Pro a pro, its performance was always decidedly second tier. From 2009 until 2018, these things all had dual core CPUs. And even in 2018, when they got quad cores, the rest of the range was moving up to six and eight. And that's why this quad core mod is such a big deal. It's something that Apple theoretically could have done themselves more than 10 years ago. But before we find out just how good it is, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by ClearVPN, the VPN that I love to use. ClearVPN comes from MacPaw, the creators of CleanMyMac X, who have been a longtime supporter of the channel. They've reworked ClearVPN for a streamlined, user-friendly experience that emphasizes the most important features. It uses top-tier encryption and employs a strict no-log policy, so no online activity or personal info is collected or stored. See, ClearVPN believes that your data is private. So they offer a secure browsing module for free to all users. ClearVPN is the VPN that you can trust and you'll love using. So whether you wanna secure your browsing experience, change your location, or access streaming services from anywhere in the world, ClearVPN has painless setup in seconds. It is so simple to use, it is really, really fast, and with plans starting at just $3.50, it's affordable as well. And you can use promo code ELMIANI with the link in the description below to save even more. Get three whole months for just 10 bucks. So why wait? Check out ClearVPN today. So my understanding is that this is not the same quad-core CPUs that you would find in a 15-inch MacBook Pro from the same time period. Yes, that is correct. So this machine, in order to facilitate this upgrade, um, I was browsing around the Intel Arc sites and on various reselling sites, and I came across a very interesting series of Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge CPUs, hmm. and that is the QE series, the ones with the QE suffix on them. And what makes those special is they are quad-core CPUs, but they share the same footprint with the dual-core M series CPUs that these machines came with. So hmm. that way you can literally just take one and solder it right onto the board and it just works. Now, the reason I can't use a standard QM series chip like you'd find in a 15 inch or 17 inch MacBook Pro is because the BGA footprint and pinout is completely different. So this thing is basically made possible by a quirk in the Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge Intel CPU lineup? Yes, yeah, that's correct. Oh and these gosh. CPUs were actually intended for like embedded use so for like single board computers and stuff like that, right? it also might run 
a little bit warmer than it would stock, but- Well, we're gonna find out. It's only 10 watts over the TDP of the original CPU, so. Wow, okay, this is this is a screamer, is what you're telling me. As good as I can, as fast <laughs> as I can make it, yes. Well, let's start with Geekbench, because I think that could give us a good idea of how the multi-core scores compare. Yes. These things are super popular, and this is already, this is the fastest of what Apple produced. All right, so these systems are both running SSDs. They both have the maxed out 16 gigabytes of RAM. The only difference between them is the CPU. Correct. And not the integrated GPU, because they only had the one, right? The yep. Intel HD 4000? Only the Intel HD 4000 on any Ivy Bridge mobile chipset. Oh, the dual core finish first. Our multi-core, 1669, nice. 766 on the single core. And here comes the quad. Whoa, 2755. Slightly lower on the single core, but I guess that makes sense. Cause that, what's the base clock? 2.3. So Okay, yeah, so 2.3 versus 2.9. Dang, that is substantial. But I do wanna know how these things compare in a more strenuous test. Geekbench, as we all know, is not known for pushing these CPUs. Honestly, they feel about the same temperature. Like, you know, the fans didn't get too loud. All right, we got the thermometer here. So it looks like our palm rest here is 39.7 degrees Celsius and the dual core 33.6. Okay, so it is a little bit cooler, but I think if we push this with, with Cinebench, we should start to see a little bit of a difference. Let's see how the 13 inch chassis can cool a quad core chip. All right, a pretty fair start. I think they both went around the same time. Although I cannot see that. Oh my God. Wow. Oh my gosh. Wow. Look at the difference between the dual core and the quad. That is massive. Well, as you would expect, the quad is definitely getting up. We're already at 102. Oh, it's already throttling too. The dual is at 86. And yeah, look at the clock speed. We're throttling down. Well, it's not going down below the base clock. Yeah, look at the difference in the temperature curve. We've been basically peaked at 100 since the very beginning. The dual core is now catching up though, so they may have now evened the playing field. This machine is so far ahead of the dual core. I mean, even with that thermal limitation, it's it, it seems like it's gonna be a bloodbath. Absolutely. A few moments later. All right, looks like the dual core is now done. Quad core has been done for quite a while. Let's see what the scores are. 17, 15 on the dual. Whoa, 28, 58 on the quad core. That's a massive difference. Absolutely. That's I mean like <laughs> a thousand points now isn't huge, but like proportionately, that's massive. Well, I can't say I'm surprised that a quad core chip beat a dual core chip, but I can say that I'm surprised at how well this thing runs. Oh, I know. I was pretty surprised myself when I finished it and it ran as well as it did. I mean, as stated before, it didn't require any sort of modifications, no custom firmware, nothing. It just Ridiculous. solder the chip on and go. I mean, that's all there was to it. Now, if I were to try to do that, <laughs> it would probably be less easy said than done. But how long did it take you to like physically swap yeah, the to chip? like actually swap them? It usually takes about an hour, maybe less as I do them more. Mm. Um, but for this specific one, you know, I take my time. Um, so it took about an hour. An hour to make the world's first quad core unibody 13 inch MacBook Pro. Yep, exactly. Do you think this is something that's feasible for people to do on their own if they're like able to do a chip swap? Yeah, I mean, if you have the equipment to do a BGA swap, like, and you have experience with it, you can absolutely do this. These are a little more tricky because they have the capacitors uh, underneath the chip that you, oh. that kind of make it not solder on straight sometimes if you're not careful. Mm. Um, but other than that, it's a straightforward swap. And how much does it cost? The chip itself, um, they're kind of hard to find. Uh, I tend to see them around between 80 and $100, so. You can get an entire one of these machines for 80 to $100. Oh, I know. So I that's know. a significant investment, but I mean, it's kind of a unique thing. You oh. can't get a Mac of this size with this performance. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And you couldn't do this on a Retina machine, if I'm not mistaken, because those um, use a different, the U could, series chips. Um, yeah, the Haswell and later ones do, Yeah, but there's one you can do it on, and that is the early 2013 
13 inch retina, which still uses Ivy Bridge. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So yeah, there is the one 12. retina MacBook Pro that could be quad core swapped. Yeah, a 13 inch one. Hmm. We might have to do that. And you can't forget the Ivy Bridge MacBook Airs as well. Oh God. <laughs> quad core MacBook Air? Who wants to see that? Leave a comment down below. Go subscribe to DOS Dude. Would you do a quad core 13 inch MacBook Air? I already have someone sending me one to do. All right, well, there you go. You have to subscribe now. And speaking of people who sent me things to do, this oh, machine- Oh, good segue. This machine was actually sent in to me by Greg Rutke of Rutke Mods. Not initially for this upgrade, but a three gigahertz dual core CPU upgrade. Um, I think that was the 3540M uh, i7 CPU, but that didn't work. Really? Because the firmware doesn't, it came out after the rest of the Ivy Bridge CPUs. Oh. So the firmware doesn't have support for it. Well, that's a bummer. So we were like waiting for literal years until I figured this out that was even possible. And now that I did it, I mean- You said, hold my beer, I'll do a quad core. Yeah, Screw exactly. Screw three so, gigahertz. Who cares about an extra 100 megahertz? We yeah. Two extra cores. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe how, well, I don't want to say simple because I knew if I tried to do this, I would set my apartment on fire. But <laughs> for you, simple to get it to work like this, really amazing. I know. I was amazed myself, honestly. Really cool mod. Really cool dude, DOS dude. Check him out. Did you like that? Yeah, that was yeah, good. That was good. good. You should put that on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.